Recently, the Cattle Commission run resolution number 81 in 2021 and ordinance 6071. The resolution number 81 raises taxes without a vote of the people. Ordinance 6071 expands the zoning out into rural cattle parish where it's never been before. I don't think that's what we believe in. I don't believe that is the uh, what the what the people of of the Republican Party want. So what we need to do today, I'm, I'm going to bring it up to Chris. I'm going to kind of let him explain the details to me. But this is more of a, you know, what are our core beliefs? I mean, before I ran for office, I was a grassroots organizer. That's what I did. We fought the Cattle Lake National Heritage Area to come to North Cattle Parish to take our private property rights. We're going to fight this. Now, once you get in a government entity, let me tell you how this works, okay? On, this, this is a little more background noise. Look, not background. Background on this. This is what happens when you start dealing with government entities. They have people on the payroll that make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and that can confuse you. Here's the rabbit hole. Go down the rabbit hole over here, and we got people down there that can talk to you for days. I don't go down the rabbit hole. What my goal is as a cattle parish commissioner is to hammer this thing every day, every day, into people in cattle parish get their liberty back. That's my angle. So I'm going to bring Chris up here. He's going to kind of give you a, a background of how we got here today, and then we'll be glad to have to answer your questions. Chris? How y'all doing? Chris Strachman. I'm the uh, co-founder of the Cattle Alliance for Freedom. I was also a, uh, a board member of the uh, Rural Planning and Zoning Advisory Committee actually authored the resolution to uh, <laughs> to what we actually want. So I'm a blue collar worker. I work in welding supply. I'm not a politician. I'm not a teacher. I'm not a preacher. So I'm coming from the bottom. Here I am. In 2019, a friend of mine called me up and said that uh, she saw a lot of posts on social media about people getting violation warnings about boats and RVs in the driveway. I didn't think anything of it because I was not one of those people. I did not get a violation warning. Uh, I had a complacency bias. It wasn't in my driveway, I didn't care. Until people were coming out by the droves wanting to know why the city of Shreveport was in their driveway passing out violation warnings. I said, you know what, this is about to hit my doorstep if I don't do something with it, if we don't do something with it. So we had a little meeting at a church on Palm Hill Road in North Caddo Parish. It was, uh, I think, the night before Thanksgiving. We didn't expect a lot of turnout. Turns out it was a lot bigger than we expected. There was over 300 people at this meeting concerned. Most of them had a violation warning for something silly. Uh, there was a lot passed out. Keithville, there were some that were passed out. And uh, North Cattle Parish, there were none passed out in the city of Shreveport. So we went to the Metropolitan Planning Commission not understanding the legislative process. We didn't understand the ties to Shreveport and the Cattle Commission and everything else. So we first went to who authored the citations. We go to the NPC and they say, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't, we don't have anything to do with this. Your city council, your parish commission, they make the rules, we just enforce them. So we went to city council and asked, why are your rules out in the parish? They couldn't give us a good answer other than, you know, it was passed in 1954 and we got a huge history lesson and then we were given a lesson on how the legislative process works. So we go to the Cato Commission. Now, I'm not going to stand here and, and beat up the Caddo Commissioners. Most of them weren't even on the commission whenever it was passed. We go to them and we say, what can we do to get Shreveport's rules out of unincorporated Caddo Parish? The answer was nothing. They could do nothing for us. They couldn't change it. So we formed a board, the Caddo Alliance for Freedom, we built up a lot of folks. We had a following of 4,000, give or take. We took 300, 400 people up to the commission meetings. 
We read the law that said that it could be changed. It was argued with us that it could not be changed. Get your state legislature to write a different law. Get them to change the law. Kind of like a sarcastic way of saying, go to Baton Rouge and see how well it works for you. Because we're reading the codes that are out in rural Caddo Parish, and they, the, between the master plan and the unified development code of Shreveport and Caddo Parish, it is much to the likeness of the Green New Deal. And I know that's a four letter word in this room of all rooms, but that's what we have. That's what we have in Caddo Parish. Our 2030 Great Expectations, Shreveport, Caddo, Master Plan, is the Green New Deal at your doorstep, and it already passed, folks. 2010 it passed. It asked for a Unified Development Code. The Unified Development Code passed in 2016. Now, they were smart about it to let it marinate for a little while before they enforced it. They started enforcing it in 2019. In 2020, we went to state legislator Danny McCormick. We sat, at, we sat with him in the conference room of a church. We roundtabled it and we wrote this law, House Bill 697. We went to the Senate committee, the legislative committee. We went to both floors and it passed the Senate unanimously. Now it's law. So we have given our parish commission the power to virtually do whatever they want. And considering the outcries by us, the people, we knew that they would do the right thing. The six Republicans on the Caddo Parish Commission wrote their own resolution in favor of House Bill 697. Now, instead of that, we're creating appointed boards. We have this uh, ordinance 6071 that creates a five-man appointed board. So we're getting out from under the thumb of the Shreveport Metropolitan Planning Commission that is nine appointees of city dwellers that tell bumpkins like me what to do, and we're going to do it all over again. We're going to have a five-man appointed board, but it's people that live out in unincorporated county parish, which is great. That would be fantastic for about five years, maybe 10 years. How long does it take to get an appointed board to be corrupt? Look around, look at Shreveport. How long does it take for an appointed board to get corrupt? Not long, folks. We all know the answer to that. So today, Commissioner Todd Hopkins has called a special meeting to get rid of this five-man board to get rid of the 2030 master plan where it concerns the unincorporated areas of Caddo Parish. He's doing almost everything we ever asked for, everything that we kicked and screamed about. Now today, you'll have to excuse me because I just wrote it down. <clears throat> On the same agenda, we have resolution number six of 2022 that says instead of creating an appointed board, they're going to employ a board, make it a parish department. Now, look at animal services and everything in between. How does that work out in the future? It doesn't. And expansion of government, expansion of bureaucracy, expansion of taxes to pay for these bureaucracies, as conservatives that fill this room, there is no possible way that we have a group of conservatives, six, on this kind of commission that can support this. There's no way. We have we have ordinance, chapter 30 of the Caddo Code of Ordinances that already controls what you can and cannot do on your property. You already pay property taxes. You don't own your property. But now we're going to create another board, another bureaucracy to control your property further in support of this Unified Development Code that is practically the Green New Deal. And if you don't believe me, look it up. It's disgusting. <coughs> and all of us small people of the Cattle Lines for Freedom, we're trying our hardest to give all of unincorporated cattle parish what they want. And it's hard to do. It really is. 
They didn't make people aware of this whenever they passed it in 2010 and passed the ordinances in 2016. We didn't know about it. We had no idea. Now there's five of us on the Cattle Alliance for Freedom. We're going door to door. We're having these meetings like the one tonight at the Greenwood Cowboy Church, and we're trying to make people aware of what's going on. And I understand that the Cattle Commission may think that they're doing what is best, but there's already ordinances in place to protect private property rights. All day long, Shreveport and the bureaucracies and government and governance of the city of Shreveport in congruence with the Cattle Commission take, take, and take. They don't protect. We're asking for property, pro private property right protection. That's all we're asking for. Now, I'm, I'm not going to piggyback off of anything Danny said too much, but he's right. At what point in time do we draw a line in the sand and say this does not represent conservatism? At what point in time? I was just in this room, in fact, listening to school board members that were defending a mandate, a medical mandate. They were defending it. Three conservatives stood in this room. Since then, they fixed it and made it right. Since then. But to stand in the Cattle Parish Republican Party's luncheon and defend a mandate, and now I'm in here having to work against commissioners that, that wrote a resolution for us just a year ago, at what point in time are we going to draw a line in the sand and ask our representatives, our appointees, our elects, when are you going to stand up for us? When are you going to stand up for conservatism? This is not what we're about. And like Danny says, we just want to be left alone. That's all I have. <laughs> I, I do want to mention the handout that y'all have, that there's a grassroots meeting at uh, the Cowboy Church in Greenwood tonight. I would encourage anybody that's never been to one of these meetings to come. Uh, all elected officials are always invited. Uh, all, all candidates for office are always invited. Um, I think it's important to get out in the, with the people and, uh, and see how the people actually feel. You know, I will tell you, when, when I got to Baton Rouge, I didn't realize what pressure would be put, put on us to conform, but there's a lot of pressure to conform. I mean, you don't, want to get, you don't want to get in the room with people you actually like and have, you know, uh, disagreements with. So you kind of, you know, you, you take the rough edges off and you, you go along to get along. But really, that's not what we're here for. We're not here to be, as elected officials, to do anything but represent our people. That's, that's what we're here for. And we're, under, we're here to represent a set of principles. I mean, you know, uh, principles are something that are very easy to establish and go by. Uh, you, you've got to know what your principles are, and when you go to vote, these are the principles. When we in Baton Rouge, we get local bills all the time, and pretty much local bills are we let the local people worry about the local bills, except when they want to increase taxes. I, I don't. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm not voting to, for that. That that's something I don't do. I'm not voting to increase the taxes on your people. So I mean, we we need a good set of principles that we go by. As politicians, we kind of live in an echo chamber, and we think that the five or six people that are in our ear hollering the loudest is reality when it's not. And it's important, like tonight, to get out amongst the people. Just walk around and just listen to what they have to say. You don't have to say anything. Just listen to them. They will love you if you just listen. It, it's really simple, and it's really it's, it, it's something that we need to get back to. If we're going to, you know, I say this all the time, if we're going to save this country, we first have to save this state. And if we're going to save this state, we got to first save this parish. And it starts one hard decision at a time. Private property rights is the basic of any right that we have. It's what separates us from China, what separates us from Korea, private property rights. All right, and uh, Lewis, would you like to take a question? Yeah, sure. Any, anybody have a question, comment? Yes, sir. I'm from New Hampshire, and I was on a committee up there. We had a very definitive um, list of what we considered the Republican platform to be. What all of our senators, all of our House members, and anyone on any committee rallied behind. We had a, a committee, and I was around 
we would go to all the different, we didn't have parishes, we had counties, but we had open meetings and listening. And everyone read the platform and they were able to give their opinion on every level. And it was broken up in, from business to taxes to you name it, it's there. Pick a fence, the whole nine years, the American dream. And um, I know we're a small state up there. Does the state of Louisiana have anything written down that starts with this is our platform? You know, uh, Mike, Mike Johnson had put some points together that he laid out that as the Republican Party in Baton Rouge, we've tried to mimic off of his. I don't have that in front of me. And I, I know it's something that we've vetted very good. But yes, we, we do have that. We have that as, uh, we, we have something in general. Whether they have it locally or not, I don't know. But we do have it in Baton Rouge. I want to just say something real quick. We do have a, uh, a platform. Problem is, is we people have people elected that don't follow the platform. He asked the question just a second ago: How in the world do we change the votes of these people? We got to realize this is done in an election. You change the votes of the people by changing the people. I say this to you because that's where the rubber meets the road. That's right. And it, you know, we can talk about all kinds of things, bad and good about somebody. Those are campaign issues. Okay. And if we don't take control of this elections that are coming along and our candidates, it'll never take. You hear people say, that's a terrible politician. Who voted for him? That's right. That's right. You know, when, when we talk about the Republican Party and what it stands for, uh, that's great and everything. You know, and the Cattle Alliance for Freedom is a very bipartisan group. Matter of fact, I had an independent and a Democrat that, uh, that rode with me to go to the Senate committee to speak. It's private properties of And I say that to say this. We should have a human standard that's called being a Christian. And what does the Bible say? Love thy neighbor. When my neighbor has a problem, when the grass is uncut, whenever they have a dead car out in their driveway, whatever the case may be that would be considered a blight or a property standard, uh, whatever, I want to go knock on their door. I want to go talk to them. I want to see what is wrong. Nine times out of ten, they have an issue that they need help with. They can't afford the part for that car or whatever the case may be. The lawnmower's broke down. And, and, and the state of the nation right now, it wouldn't surprise you to come to find that your neighbor might not be able to afford to fix the problem. Go talk to your neighbors, knock on the door, shake their hand, make eye contact. And I know that social media has ruined that a lot in this nation, but it is still a thing to go talk to your neighbor, to shake their hand, to make that eye contact, show some compassion, and see what the problem is. Don't call the MPC. Don't call property standards. Don't be emailing your cattle commissioner and saying, my neighbor's grass is 18 inches tall. Go talk to them, love on your neighbor, because that is what the Bible says you should do to begin with, whether you're Republican, Democrat, Independent, or in between. Doesn't matter. Be a good person, and we won't have to deal with this. People calling and complaining about their neighbor having a dead car or tall grass is how we got in this boat. Just from something simple like that, opened up the door for all these ordinances that some Yahoo agreed with, and our commission voted for it unanimously without reading it. You know, that's a very good point. Living out in the country, we don't, I don't call the cops on my neighbor. 